You're listening to the Ballet Piano Podcast, lifting the lid on dance accompaniment. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of the Ballet Piano Podcast in conversation with. I'm Chris Hobson, and as always, I'm joined by Matt Gregory. Hello, listeners. Akiko Hobson. Hello. And this week, we are very proud and privileged and excited to be joined in conversation by Mr. Richard Honor. Hello, Yay. Richard. Hello. <laughs> thank you so much for making the journey and joining us. How are you? I'm well, well, thank you. Very good. And we've got some Scottish sunshine here today, which Indeed, is you've yeah. had some Scottish Lovely. rain, though, I think. We've had a, mi- yeah. we've had a mixed bag. <laughs> but it's been lovely. So thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm fine. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. Very well. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know Richard, Richard was the principal conductor up at Scottish Ballet for quite a long time, weren't you? I think I was with Scottish Ballet for thirty-three years. Wow! wow. But initially, not as in that position. It right. was only about seventeen years ago that I but only was, about seventeen years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if we go back to the start of your career, you started off conducting down in London at the Opera House. No, I didn't conduct at the no. Opera House. I was on the music staff at the Opera House in a, okay. an administrative position initially. Right. And then I got to know Edward Downs yeah. uh, quite well. And he'd just taken over the Australian Opera. Mm-hmm. And they needed somebody who could go and organise their musical department. Okay. So he asked me if I would be interested in going. And I said, sure. And so we were in Sydney for five years, 1972 mm. to 77. Wow. And during that time, I transformed from being basically administrative to being a repetiteur. Yeah. And it was in that role that I came back to join Scottish Opera in 1977, where I was for nine years. Right. And during my last year there... Uh, And I'd been conducting odd performances. You you were just thrown in at the last minute to do a performance that so-and-so couldn't manage or didn't want to do. Um, (laughs) I used to get off at the Saturday nights sometimes just because nobody else on the staff at Norman could be bothered with. They don't want to get on the train (laughs) to go home. (laughs) And um, I was asked if I would, by a friend, who was a friend of the then music director of Scottish Ballet, Mm -hmm would I be interested in conducting some nutcrackers? And I said, yeah, why not? Yeah. So I did those, and then I joined them for their spring tour, which was a triple bill, and then they offered me a full-time job. But the catch was I had to play for class, which was something I had no idea. Oh, <laughs> yes. Wow. So you had a baptism by fire with ballet class? I did. <laughs> Fortunately, um, Paul Tyers, who just really morphed from being a a principal into being a ballet master, was very sympathetic and uh, helped me enormously because it was a complete fog. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What on earth is going on? (laughs) (laughs) We've said this with other guests that we've spoken to and other colleagues, you know, a ballet master will look at you or the teacher will look at you and go, we'll have a three, please, for plies. But unless you know what that means, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's no information, is it? Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> also, I mean, there was a very good um, pianist on the company then who was very experienced. And he also was very kind and gave me lists of things that I could play for. Right. This yeah. or that. And, of course, we didn't have the internet then, so yeah. it was oh, rummaging yes, around course. in second-hand music shops. Yeah, and yeah like fake books and yeah, greatest fine. collection. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and t- TV themes. And yes. All that sort of thing. <laughs> I've still got, um, in storage in Manchester, some of the books that I had and that I collected. You know, I bid for them on eBay and things like that when I was first starting up. You know, greatest collection of ballet hits and opera arias yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. TV themes, movie themes to try and make things a bit more fun. Yes, yeah. So... How was your first class? It was okay. You had a you I had got an understanding. It. They were very understanding. Yeah. I must say, Scottish ballet, the dancers are always ninety nine percent of them are really nice. Right. Yeah. There's always the one percent who like to catch you out yeah. or be awkward. <laughs> um, but no, they were very good and they were very patient. And I went on playing class for about. 12 years or something. Right. And can can you sort of remember when you it became easy and comfortable and you 
sort of knew that knew how to play for class oh, in it, an accomplished way. Well, after about six months, I yeah. knew what was going to come. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. So we I sort of say six months, don't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And after that, yeah, it got easier. But I never thought that I really conquered it. I mean, I've heard other people who come and they're so flashy and <laughs> you know, it's all so easy and yeah. I think, oh, I was struggling yeah. through this and that. And of course, fortunately, I'd been a church organist for a brief while, right. so I'd learned how to more or less improvise and mm. um, because I'd done a music degree and mm. in those days you actually had to learn how to write a fugue or yeah. Yeah. you know uh, do harmony properly and harmonized bar chorales. Yes. Yeah. I found that I had a natural keyboard sense of harmony. Mm -hmm. What I didn't have was a natural sense of melody. So that was the right the thing mm -hmm. that I really had to um, try and work on. And how did you get on with the, the dance language? Um not always <laughs> terribly well. Because, <laughs> because musicians, you you learning another language yeah. and That's learning right. what, yeah. all this, what all the vocabulary means. But also they come up with musical terms and you think, and they, you know, Ashley Page, great, I loved him. Yes. But he used to say, can we go from the Anacrusis? And you think, <laughs> <laughs> what on earth yeah. is that? Where is that? I say, I recently was asking you, can we have something that's a little bit heavier but with more breath? <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. when I started, I didn't understand coda. I was like, oh, oh yeah. like for musician, coda is completely different for yeah. ballet people. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> it's funny, isn't and it? the menage—they always want to do a menage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and unless you know, that's got a completely different meaning, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I remember the first person you I don't I'm sure you must know Richard, the first person who ever asked me for a code was Paul Bays, Paul Bays Kitcher. Oh yes, I remember he was a Scottish ballet for about two years. Yeah, yeah. and I remember him saying to me, he said, We'll have a code. I think, what's a coda? Yeah. He said, Oh, they've got one in Nutcracker after they've hard a dirt. So, I don't really know where I, I really This is a the trouble. They career. assume you know yeah. Yeah. a large amount of ballet repertoire and say, Can we have that a bit like this? Yeah. <laughs> And I just, then, I think I remember saying to Paul, just like, just sing to me what you want. Yeah, yeah. And I will do, I'll do a hack job on something that will yeah, yeah. get us through it from A to B. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So 12 years of class play. So you, I think that's fair to say, though, what you said, sorry, which is you never, I don't think you ever fully feel like you accomplish it. You can get better and better, but there's always something to learn. You can always increase your repertoire and increase your understanding, yes, can't uh, you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But then, you, you know, somebody else comes in who's, uh, Better pianist and or better ballet pianist, and you yeah. Know. And it makes your class look really pathetic. I do. <laughs> and you feel <laughs> deflated when you hear them <laughs> rattling through things. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or you can hear some people come in and they just come out and they go, Oh, that was brilliant, class. What was great about it? Oh, all the music they're playing, you know, it was all the everything that we could sing along to. We knew everything. Yeah. Like, well, what do you think about my four part improvised fugues yeah. then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I put my life and soul yeah. and blood and sweat and tears into this. And that, yeah. then you get ballet people who, or ballet teachers who don't want tunes. Yes. yes. Too many notes. No, just play minimal yes. notes. So many notes. That's, yeah, yeah. so many notes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that too many notes. Yeah. yeah. I think, well, you've got to know who you're playing for, and that comes with experience, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it does, and you get to know and, them, and um, you know, sometimes you get somebody who's mad on opera. So that's great. Yeah. Because yeah. you could drag out Traviata and yeah. Lucia, yeah. And, uh, and, and they're wonderfully happy, even if, Nobody else's. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, without meaning to put in a sweeping generalization, if you haven't played for a, a Russian teacher before yeah. and then you think you're going to go in with your jazz <laughs> standards, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lesson you learn quickly is to put Gershwin I, behind you, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I can't the next remember hour. who she was. Madam, somebody or other. She was very ancient. She used to come in and put a pile of pills and on the top of the piano. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they obviously to be taken in a certain order. <laughs> and my, my, my colleague at the time thought, I'll just swap a few rounds. So I don't know whether it, it made any difference to her life. But she used to just say, hey, oh, hey, oh. You think, what a, oh, God. What the bloody hell are we going through? <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but is it different conducting ballet to like opera or other? Oh, yes. Yeah. Because you are constrained by other forces, chore choreographic or personal. Um, preferences of the staff, part of the ballet staff. Yeah. And 
you don't have any... I mean, you do have a certain say. I mean, what I developed over the most of my career was to either play for rehearsals, which I enjoyed, yeah. because mm. it was like being back in the opera house, mm. uh, or I'd go in with a pianist who understood me, and we used to... I used to just briefly conduct. Yeah. And eventually we come to a consensus and everybody seems reasonably happy. Yeah. <laughs> what I found the hardest was they'd rehearsed to a, a recording. Okay. Yeah. And then you, you were given one rehearsal. Yeah. And you'd go in and say, oh, no, that's wrong, that's wrong. And you think, yeah. well, come on. You've had six, eight weeks rehearsing this. I've had three hours. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's quick orchestral calls, maybe maybe two maybe two sessions if you were lucky, and then yeah, yeah, you know, usually not the tech, you'd have the dress, and that was it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be incredibly <laughs> different, and like you say, you know, trying to please everybody in a ballet company as a as a music director or a conductor is very difficult, yeah. isn't it? And it can depend on even the day of the week or the time of the rehearsal. Well, or the certainly time of the Monday, show. Mondays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> but that we should enjoy. I mean, particularly when we're out on the road performing, performances used to get slicker as the week went on. Yeah. yeah. So by Saturday night, sometimes you could rattle through a pretty awful piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have um, a personal best that you managed to knock off a show while you were conducting on a Saturday night? Sorry, so that. So you managed to knock off a certain amount of time oh. on a Saturday night. Did you ever know a personal best? <laughs> I'm not going to admit to that. <laughs> 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 but I used to I used to check every night performance times. Yeah, and I, I have to say I think I was pretty consistent, so they couldn't complain that much. That's good because I know there were let's say there were a set of conductors who were on. I'll tell you the names when we switch off the recording button. Who were doing um, math, math, Matthew Bourne's Nutcracker, playing. right? Oh. Yes, and yes. they would they were having competitions to get it down to and it was like point one of a second. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when they got it down to being so slick. Like, oh, I was 0. 0.3 quicker than you. <laughs> so, really, that's yes, I mean, you, there were certain dancers that I used to enjoy. Uh, there was a um, girl called uh, uh, Tomo Sato, uh, who was very, very quick. She was tiny. Yeah. And she could really zip around the stage. Yeah. And we used to have competitions in solos and things. <laughs> See who could get to the end first. Yeah. <laughs> She invariably won. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got that understanding with a dancer as well, and you've got that sort of relationship, yeah, it makes for yeah. it makes for a really good performance. Oh, uh, and it's uh, great to conduct. It's great for the orchestra yeah, to play because right. you're not hundred. It's not just a case of going through the same old routine, is it? And no, no. And um, of course, you can differentiate the performance, as you say, for the various casts. Yeah, and so it, it keeps it interesting for you that you're trying to do slightly different things. On different nights. Yeah, it's. I'm just thinking back then to like the days that we used to have, that I used to have with Northern and things like that in the company. And it was, it just made for exciting performance. It made for sort of like quite fulfilling performances yes, as well. Yes, yeah. And you, you, you sort of feel the orchestra's really on your side. Yeah. And they're all going for it as well. So that's a lovely feeling when you go out. But then, I mean, we used to, used to go out of the pit thinking that was a really good show tonight. Everybody, mm. the audience loved it, and there'd be somebody standing there saying, "That was wrong." <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, far too quick. Yes, yes. You know, when you're conducting a ballet, how much are you watching the stage? Um, more or less all the time. Yeah. Because you, I mean, You've ballet music is. Not that complicated. I mean, unless you're doing Stravinsky. Or yeah. 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 But uh, Tchaikovsky, you more or less know yeah. uh, everything about it without looking at the score. So sure. you can watch. And, but I used to find I had pinch points. Yeah. That's yeah. where yes. I needed to be for that. Yeah. Mm. Um, but if they went off the wrong direction for some reason, <laughs> <laughs> it's not completely throw you. Yeah. And what can you do? You've just got to keep going, haven't yeah. you? That's yeah. it. There's no yeah. two ways about it. Yeah. And the repertoire that you had at Scottish over those 30-something years was incredibly vast, wasn't it? And it, it was. Changed. Well, we, when I first went, it was nearly all Daryl. Yeah. So we were doing things like Tales of Hoffman, Nutcracker, um, what else? Can't remember. But then we did Romeo and Juliet, which was the one from Stuttgart for yeah. Kranko, which yeah. 
It's one of the best still. Oh, that's wonderful. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Production. yeah. 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 Um, and then gradually, after Daryl died in 19, I think it was 87, then gradually new things bled in. Yeah. So we, um, for instance, we did a Peter Pan, which was designed for really for Glasgow's Year of Culture, right. 1990. Mm. And it was a Glaswegian composer who I think did a pretty good job. And Graham Lustig came up and choreographed it. And eventually I went and did that in Hong Kong where he redid some bits. Right. And um, it was better because there was more flying, more fighting. It yeah, was, there was more. It was very exciting. The third act was very exciting then. Um, and then Nanette Glushak came. Yeah. And uh, she was lovely. I love working with her. Oh, she's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I played uh, Allegro Brillante when she said, uh, uh-huh. she's like, uh, she, she does appreciate the musician very, very well. Oh, everything she's was right. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you didn't do things wrong. No. They're wrong. Yeah. yeah. They've got it's to be amazing. On the music. So you can just play so fast, and then yeah. there's like, you've got to get on the music. That's like, right. Yeah. That's the dream, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Well, she came, and of course, we then got some Balanchine. Which was great, Scotch Symphony, Who Cares, yeah. uh, Concerto oh, yeah. Barocco, um, which was, oh, that's dreadful, isn't it? At the speed you have to go at in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then, of course, uh, Galina Samsova came in 1992, yeah. and then we started to get a sort of uh, more royal ballet sort of view of things with Capelia and. Uh, her Nutcracker, not her Nutcracker, her Swan Lake, her Sleeping Beauty. Um, then after that, we had Robert North, who brought in a lot of his mm-hmm. stuff. Um, he did a very good Carmen, actually. Right. I think it was good. There was only one moment when we used to giggle, which was when they were supposed to be riding horses, and they were all going around. <laughs> <laughs> and I must say, we used to laugh at that bit. But um, the rest of it, dramatically, it worked really well. And the thing about Scottish ballet was, when I first joined, it was a theatre ballet. Yeah. Uh. It was acting. Yeah. Dancing, yeah. yeah. Story was most important. Yeah. With Galena, it became more royal ballet, sort of, yeah. kind of abstract. Yeah, um, if, yeah. If and right technique word. and things. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. more Straight than story. Yeah, yeah. All that. Uh, Robert North came. He did some story ballets. They were good. Mm. Um, and then Ashley appeared. Yeah, and that was a, a sort of pinch point in my life because <laughs> initially. I found him very really difficult. But by the time he left, 10 years later, yeah. we were really good friends. Yeah. And still keep up with him. That's and good. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing immediately. At I saw, I, I worked with Ashley last year, actually. Right. They did on the town in, um, in, oh, Japan. in Japan. Yeah. Yes. I played for all the classes for the oh, rehearsals. Right. Yeah. They, they did yeah. four weeks in London. That was the gig over in in Stratford at yeah, Here East. Yes, yeah. I remember. So I yeah, did three weeks of classes mm. for them. Yeah, because I depped yeah. your classes that you didn't do. Didn't there was I? a couple I of I'd, Saturdays yeah. I couldn't do. Yeah, lovely bunch of people, and Ashley was lovely. Actually, yeah. he didn't teach any classes, but he no, was always no. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he was. He was no, lovely. the thing about Ashley was initially you thought he was being personal. Yeah, but orig- eventually you twigged that all he wanted was for everybody. To get a hundred percent, yeah, and that if you got something slightly wrong in a performance, he wasn't saying you sub, you know, you sabotage the performance. Mm. Could you possibly just get it that little bit better? Because then they'll be better, yeah, that, you know. And so that was a a new attitude, and I enjoyed that. And we did, of course, quite a number of his pieces, like Fearful Symmetries, which was great. Loved doing that. Mm. And uh, he did a not so good nutcracker. It was a little bit way out, but Cinderella. It's the best Cinderella I've ever seen. Wow! It was mm-hmm. really good because he he has that sort of acerbic sense of humour mm. and sort of uh, almost disruptive view of life. Mm. And of course, that's exactly what that piece is all about. Yeah, mm. and great score as well. Oh yes, not as good as Romeo. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I agree. Storm, I agree with you. And I was thinking, I mean, like Romeo is fiendishly difficult. Oh, it can be. You know, some of the things, if you, you know, to, just to get your fingers around things like the fight scene and things oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. And it's always a bit like class. You sort of go, you never quite get it. You're never going to get it 100%. And every time you think, 
when you think, okay, right, I've got it note wise, I've got it phrasing wise, and then you go into this, okay, right, how am I going to interpret, you know, the brass section or the horns, or how am yeah, I going yeah, to do yeah, the, yeah. you know, the madrigals and things like that, and try and make yeah. it sound even more orchestral. And yeah. I always got a great sense of fulfillment from Romeo and Juliet yeah. that I didn't quite get the same with Cinderella. No, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and pianistically, it seems to fall slightly better under the hands. Yeah. No, it's, but it's all, it's good fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, you know you come out of a technical rehearsal for that or a full call of that, you can be you can be shattered, but you, that's one of those moments where you can tap yourself on the back and go, that was a job well done. Yeah, but you're mm. shattered in the right way, aren't you? Yes. Because you're involved in the drama of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the great thing about Romeo is that the drama gets better as it goes on. Mm. And the first first act is a bit balletic in lots of ways, yeah. uh, except the balcony scene, yeah. which is superb, except for that boy solo in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> which does seem a little bit out of place to me. And wasn't, I don't believe was there in the original. It was put in to give the boy something to something do. Something to do, yeah. And yeah. it's almost, I remember it was described to me as, it's a bit of um-cha-cha. It's like, if you just yeah. think um-cha-cha, you will nail the tempo every time. Yeah, yeah. Um, second act's great because it has a big climax. Yeah. But the third act, if you do it well cut, which I think in all the versions I've done, bar one in Hong Kong, which wasn't very good, um, has always been cut really rather well yeah. and leads into act four. Yes. And act four, of course, is the best, what, 15 minutes? Yes. Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing Music. beats it. Yeah. yeah. And you've got a good choreography, especially if you've got a good choreography yeah. on the stage. And it's yeah. just, that is when music and dance become one, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's always, it's always been an absolute favourite for me. You can follow the podcast team by visiting the social media channels. Search for Ballet Piano Podcast on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter for up-to-date information and content about the podcast. So going back, so... The administration side of where you say where you started off must have sort of informed you and helped you over the years as your career's grown and you've worked with more and more people, more and more choreographers, and more has become expected that those people skills that you learn on an administration side and yeah, dealing with people, yeah. it's gonna that's gonna stand you in a good stead for running a department or conducting an orchestra, isn't it? Because you just that's know right. how yeah. you're gonna get on with things and yeah. how you're gonna get on with people and try to bring people around to your way of thinking or having to learn to understand their way of thinking as well. Yes. But when I joined the Scottish Ballet, there were, I think, four of us in the department. Right. Uh, when Ashley arrived, he and the then music director fell out very quickly and he okay. flounced off <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> and um, I was left then to take on all the... Because we'd lost the administrator, she'd been chopped. Right. So there was one pianist... And myself, and we had to do everything. Wow. Fortunately, the pianist Brian, yeah, is a genius with IT and yeah. all that. So he took on the whole of the sort of sound editing because okay. a lot of that mm. for Ashley, he had a lot of liked to um, loop things. Yeah, but one of the things I had to do was to obviously be manage that in a musical publishing, musical recording yeah. sense. So having had some experience, it was quite good because I could then go to publishers or recording companies or even uh, groups, mm. uh, bands or whatever, and argue Ashley's case quite well. And then on the whole, I think we did a pretty good job on that. But it meant my whole time from about 2003 to... Last year when I retired, there was an awful lot of administration, licensing. Yeah. And some of it is really complicated. Mm -hmm. There was one show we did which was the first version of The Crucible. And the choreographer wanted to use a lot of film music. Right. Bernard mm -hmm. Herrmann and yeah. people like that. And to find out who actually owns the rights to any of these yeah. things is a nightmare. Because the lawyers argue amongst themselves mm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, on the first night of the performance at about 25 past 7 I was still on the phone to a lawyer in Los Angeles oh my no. trying to say can we please agree on a fee <laughs> for the use of this damn track yeah we've got five minutes left until <laughs> <Yes. all> that. <gasps> that's scary <sighs> oh. 
but nightmare. But then being a music director for any company is a multifaceted role, isn't it? But especially when you get to your slightly smaller companies that are not your big um, EMBs and Royals and BRBs. Yes, we've got people who do all that yeah. sort of thing or enjoy doing it. Because I can't say I enjoyed a lot of it. Mm. It was a trudge. It just had to, but it has to be it done, doesn't be it? Done. That's it, yeah. you know, and you've got, if you've got two or three of you in the department, I think like when I was at Northern, there was four of us and we, when we compared it to Royal, you know, you're doing the job of, you know, well, these, it's at least double the amount of staff there. Yeah. But you still try to produce the same results and get on with it. And yeah, you just have to. You know, at one stage, I was playing for rehearsals, booking the orchestra, doing all the licensing, doing the scheduling. Jeez. And they, they just wonder, why didn't get that, you know, oh, I didn't get the right piano in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. God help me. <laughs> <laughs> You've just got to, it just somehow, it just happens, doesn't it? And you just know, like you say, you've well, just got to do it. it. If you have really good inter-relationships within the department, yeah, and people are prepared to step up yeah. and do something that's perhaps not their responsibility, mm. but they're prepared to do because they see you're struggling getting something done. Yeah, and that can, can come, sorry, that can, 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 let me put my teeth back in. That can come <laughs> down to, you know, like building up personal relationships and yeah, things with people yeah, over time, yeah, doesn't it? And people yeah. know that you're working hard and you're working yeah. your backside up. You just, yeah. and people will step up and help you out. Yeah. It's so exciting. It's, it's, yeah, they're flying by the seat of your pants. Well, it's, it's exciting. It can be a nightmare as well, can't it? Well, yes, both. <laughs> it's, it's a relief when it's all over. Yeah. <laughs> it's an and exciting then, job though, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. And that fulfillment you get at the end. And then, of course, you were responsible for setting up the, have I got this right, the Pianist for Dance course. Is uh, that the title that it still goes by? Or Musician piano, for Dance? Piano for Dance. Piano I for think Dance. It's called now. Um, yes, um, there were two reasons for that. I got to know a lady called Rita McAllister, who was the then deputy head of the music school at the Academy in Glasgow. Mm-hmm. But she was a Prokofiev freak. Right. And so <laughs> uh, I, we used to have quite good conversations. And I got her, I think, to write a couple of program articles and so on. Mm. So we became quite good friends. And she was very interested in trying to get pianists out of the piano faculty mm. to be interested yeah. in dance, but also to get connections with Russia. Right. And at that time, we were struggling finding enough pianists to cover all our rehearsals yeah. and classes. And so I suggested that we might take on a couple of students. Uh, they didn't have to have any experience, but by the end of, and it was a one-year course initially, by the end of the year they would be able to at least play a respectable class. Yeah. And also, because they're good pianists, they could play rehearsals. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we would supervise them and look after them. So that was set up. And um, it's kind of developed from that into lots of other things. They go and do percussion or jazz or improvisation. Yeah. Improvisation, of course, is a big part of playing for class anyway. Yes. So, so that's a good um, discipline for them to work on. Mm. But my my role really is just to get them to play repertoire correctly. Yeah. Mm. And to deconstruct a piano score so that it's more orchestral. Yeah. Which is something I learned to do, obviously, as mm. a repetitor. Mm. And um, on the whole, I think we've been quite successful. Yeah, because it's been... How long has the course been running now? It's... 2006. It's right. Wow. And we've had two students most years. It was one year we didn't have anyone. Right. Um... But um, most years we've we've done quite well, and um, I think almost everybody's ended up somewhere in the dance world, mm. um, either as a company pianist in Houston or yeah um, with the Canadian National Ballet or wherever, or they've gone back home to Germany and they work in Munich mm-hmm. and they work in dance schools and occasionally with the I think is it the Bavarian State Ballet? I don't uh, know yes. what they're called. Yes, yeah. Because, I mean, that was the first course in the world, wasn't it, pretty much? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Set up. And, yeah. Yeah. and it's the only course that's had that length of time, you know, like 14, 15 years to sort of like learn and support people through because there's not a lot out there to... Well, this was, I mean, my unhappy experiences early in my career with Scottish Ballet mm-hmm. prompted me to think that why, why aren't conservatoires doing something about this you can go and spend two years training as a repetiteur 
in an opera school. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. nothing. But I suppose it was because there were no dance courses in conservatoires. There are now. Yeah. Mm. The one in Glasgow has a very successful one. Mm. <coughs> and um, so I thought this would be a way of trying to get people to recognise playing for ballet is not a third-rate career. Yeah. Because I can remember one, and I have to admit to this, when I first joined Scottish Opera, Scottish Ballet shared our premises. Mm -hmm. And they had the miserablest little studio. And they were kind of looked down on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you're a ballet pianist. Well, yeah. But the more you do it, the more you realise that the skills that you require there are just as important. Yeah. And just mm. as... Um, wide ranging mm. as they are if you're going to work with opera yeah mm. and so why not try and get people to come through as ballet pianists to get to do some conducting yeah and um, that's where we've tried to work from I don't think any of our students has ended up conducting anywhere yet mm. I'm still hopeful that maybe one day they will that's why we set this podcast up, wasn't it? It's just to bring this to the forefront. Yeah, that to was create a dialogue, and so people can try to understand yeah. why we do it, what we do, and how we do it. Yeah, because there's not a lot sort of written and published about being a ballet pianist, is there? In sort of like training, we had this conversation. I mean, Matt, you approach it in a different way, but mm. most pianists you talk to, you know, how did you get into doing this job by accident? What was your first six months like? Hell, yes. and then people either you know just go through it and. Drown. Suck it up and get on with it, <laughs> or that's it. They'll never well, be they seen sink. again, and they go off. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no sympathy. Yeah, you know, if you play yeah. a bad, you go in and play a bad class, you don't get any sympathy from anybody. No, no. Really. no. no. But like, uh, so student who enrolled this course, like, is there anybody who just couldn't improvise at all? Some of them had no idea. They hadn't even because these days people don't have keyboard harmony skills. Yeah. Mm. So you're really starting from very basic, like a C major chord. Yeah, yeah. And so you might spend a long time explaining tonic dominant, subdominant. You know, so they don't just they basic don't, harmony. So what, mm. what do they come to the course with? They in, come in terms with of knowledge. They and come with a postgraduate piano okay. technique, right? And most of them have had that. Mm. Yeah. One or two have been a little bit less secure, mm. but certainly. We've got, um, you know, we've had quite a number of Chinese um, pianists, yeah, um, Koreans, and their technique's fabulous, yeah. But somehow their musicality needs to be dragged out of them, yeah, because yeah. they've learnt things almost by rote, yeah, mm. Mm. and you don't feel that there's much heart in it, yeah, mm. or yeah. much. This is my way of doing it. This mm. is the way I've heard it on a recording, yeah. Mm. Mm. And it's, I think bringing that empathy and understanding to your playing is what is going to stand you in great stead throughout a career as being a ballet pianist, isn't it? Because you've got to have empathy, you've got to have understanding, you've yeah. got to be able to, I don't know, understand what you're not told. Yes, yes. And sort of very quickly decipher through these instructions, which you may or may not understand, <laughs> <laughs> to produce something very quickly that's going to get a dancer through a warm-up, a plie, or a grand allegro. Yes, yes. But also, I think it's very important to develop personal relationships with all your dancers. Yeah. Mm. So that they can come to you and say, you know that bit? A little bit difficult, can we do it a bit differently? Yes. And, uh, oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, a dancer yeah. will just be like, you know, just, just a bit. You know, give you the eye that says it's a little bit slower. Yeah, yeah. You know, things like yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. Or sometimes, if the teacher set something and a dancer's done something from the corner and they they, they brush past the piano, I always, I sometimes I'll say, "Is the tempo okay?" Yeah. Because oh, I know we're we're still doing it. Groups are coming across the room, and then I can adjust because someone's just done it, and they can tell me if, if the tempo's right. You develop this language with your dancers yeah. in your studio or yeah. your company, don't you? Which is you know, it can just be one eyebrow raised, yeah. or yeah. you yeah, know, yeah. a tongue into the left cheek, or things like that, or <laughs> just you know, just I don't know, just different yeah. mouth actions, yeah. which you you all learn. Which is oh my 
God, what is this? Or, you know, like, <laughs> slow down and bloody help us out, please. Yeah. You know, or, and you end up, you know, as a penis, you could end up taking the hit for the dancers because you'll slow down to help them out and then you'll get berated by the teacher yeah, or the right. yeah. lecturer going, yeah. no, yeah. no, 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 keep yeah. the tempo, do not no. slow yeah. down for them. Yeah. And then you yeah. get that eye to the corner to them, which basically says, really sorry, I tried. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, suck Don't, it up and yeah. get on with it yeah. now. Don't stretch it for the pirouettes. Yeah. <laughs> keep one tempo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you get the opposite as well, you know. Yeah. Like, please slow down. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I have, um, I think I've spoken this in the, the other episode, but I had a teacher who wasn't really musical and this grand allegro. Basically, each count, he wanted different speed. So I said, musically, I mean, I can do it, but like ha- the dancer wouldn't know the timing because each beat is different mm. lengths. And then so musically, it will sound very strange. Yeah. And he got very, very angry about me and then let's say he got passionate he, he's yeah. a very passionate <laughs> ballet right. teacher. he's italian and isn't he, he was like what do you mean when i was a principal dancer zubi major followed me dancing and slowed down everything i for bet me. he didn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then, uh, you just cannot say anything can yeah. you no. <laughs> And music's always the one. I mean, you must, you've probably experienced this more than we have, Richard, you know, as you're all in conducting as well as being a pianist for the company is music always seems to be the one that will just bend almost until it breaks yeah. Yeah. to make it work for yeah. Yeah. whatever the choreographic intent yeah. is. Did you have to stand up for the musician or music to the dancers as a conductor quite often? Not often, because I think we usually manage to come to an agreement Fairly early on how it's how things were going to go. Mm. And they knew they could come and talk to me and say, I'm not very happy about that. Can we mm. try it differently or do something differently? And, uh, and so, no. I mean, I can only remember once or twice coming off and sort of thinking, there's a thundercloud waiting. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, you get a... A load of expletives and. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember being told by my music director, John Price Jones at Northern. Oh yes, and we yeah. were on tour with the Northern version of Peter Pan, which was written by film composer Stephen Warbeck. Right. And I remember this meeting so well. So there was the three of us from our department, you know, music director, assistant music director, and company pianist. And yeah. we're going through these tempos for the Peter Pan. I remember John saying to me, he's like, you know, we've got to respect the musical intentions. No matter how crap the music is, we still have to respect <laughs> the intentions that the composer had, you know, and not, yeah. you know, of course there's a company and understanding, but we can't just bend and break all the time to make it work. You know, we've got uh-huh. to keep the musical intention behind yeah, it. Otherwise yeah. we're just going to, it's going to sound rubbish. Yeah. Mm. And that was, I remember for me, I hadn't thought about it in that way before. I was thinking, Yes. You know, and now I will quite often sometimes say that to people, especially like new teachers or people who are coming in. It's like, you know, there's only so far you can push it before it's going to lose its musical integrity. Mm, Mm. There there are two things that I used to think. One, you should be able to sit in the audience, shut your eyes and have a satisfactory music performance. Yeah. Yeah. And feel that that element has really Mm. been something. Mm. Yeah. And if it isn't, if it's all over the place and you feel seasick, the whole yeah. Time, yeah. yeah, that's the one. You know, that's not acceptable. No. And the other, th- the other thing that I used to, <laughs> I, I have to smile about, <laughs> is you get a choreographer coming and saying, well, "I've been listening to this recording of X, mm-hmm. and I want it to be like that." And so you think, "Yes, okay, that's a pretty fair rendition of of um, the composer's intentions. Let's do it." As soon as they start choreographing, nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right out the window. <laughs> and you think, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? As well, and you know, working in the ballet industry as a musician, if you're lucky, you've got choreographers and artistic directors and dancers who've got some form of basic understanding of music and will work with you and go, "Oh, does this work?" You know. As, would you be happy with this? Yeah. And then you can go to the flip side and you've got, you know, you could be working with people who've got very little musical understanding. Uh-huh. You know, great technique and great artistry, but little musical understanding. And you, you can find yourself sometimes almost, uh, I know I have in the past, scrabbling around musically, chasing after them, going, oh, 
I mean, heck, I hope this is right. Yeah. Uh. And it's you know, you just hope, like you said, that you come to it, you come to it together, and yes. you've got something yeah. that you're all happy with at the end of the day. Yeah. That's my understanding. Actually. <laughs> that's what that's what I think. What we all hope for, and how much you know? Do you find that this course has helped the pianists along the way? Because I know, like, I've met a couple of people who've done the course, and you know, they've been great. And you can sort of go, you know, oh, I wish I'd have had that at the start, as opposed to just hoping for the best. I think it gives them a certain sense of confidence, self confidence. Yeah. Um, obviously, class playing is something that is a sort of cocoon on its own and that they need to develop their own style, they need to develop an understanding and that comes with experience. Yeah. But when they've been coming and they're good pianists, then they often can play almost anything, mm. probably better mm. than I could, mm. you know. And But they had to learn how to develop a sense of sound that is what the dancers want. Yeah. Mm. Not what the arranger has put on the page. Mm. And I think that that has been quite a good element, but it's also informed their other way of playing things. Yeah. And um, one of the things I had never thought about until Nanette came, um, she said, you know, you can breathe, the dancers have to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. And I'd never really thought yes. about that. Uh, Although I'd worked with singers for 20 years or so. Mm. Yeah. And had taken that as a natural um, part of life. Somehow when it came to ballet music, mm. it didn't, that particular thing didn't click in mm. for about three or four years. And then once I got that, that was fine. Mm. And I think they have to understand, pianists have to understand that they need to breathe as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and the music has paragraphs, it has sentences, it has clauses yeah. mm. that they need to emphasise in a way, either because it's orchestral, that's how it mm. sounds, or because musically it has to have a, a sort of syntax yeah. that grows. You know, the, the idea that you have four bars, four bars, and eight bars mm. in exercises in class very mm. often. And that is so often the structure of something in Tchaikovsky. Or yeah. Or Minkus yes. or Drigo or somebody like that. And then, you know, the support, which I think is great that people get when they're on this course for learning how to play repertoire. Yes. And, yeah. you know, it's not just, you know, oh, you can play the piano, you'll be great, here you go, here's a job, and yeah. then you're faced with, you know, some of the Tchaikovsky scores, which, are, you know, most of the time they're all right, but there's always bits that are either, you know, there's stuff in there in the orchestra that the dancers will never really hear. And yes, then you exactly. try to yeah. play... You know, you try to play three hands effectively, aren't yes, you? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I remember um, an assistant MD who gave me this sort of like little gem of information, which is learn what to play and how to play it. Yeah. It's like, you know, don't just take a score and look at it and go as read. It's like, you know, go and listen to other pianists playing it for rehearsals and listen to what they play and how they play it. And yeah, then, you know, yeah. go and sit in if it's a if it's a ballet that doesn't have a piano in the pit, it's like, you know, just spend a couple of your free evenings with your reduction, sitting, you know, in a free seat in the house or on the side of the stage. Or in the and, pit. Yeah. I mean, you learn so much by being part of an orchestra. Yeah. As to how an orchestra works. You know, the attack, different attacks of strings or brass or wooden wind and knowing how they work as blocks yeah. within the orchestra. And then take that into, and then taking that into your playing of yeah, the rehearsals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why are you yeah. thinking that, Chris? I thought you were just thinking about the pub to go after the. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was always there, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose. But that's that's the safe haven at the end of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a safe haven sometimes. Because every time we go somewhere for the whole uh, trip together. Oh yeah, I went on this tour, and uh, there's a pub around the corner here. There's a pub here, and then the name is called. I was like, Are you just going on tour to the pub? Is that, is that how you decided where your digs were, nearest to the pub? Yes. <laughs> well, not necessarily nearest to the pub. It had to be close to the theatre as well. No, no steps on the way home. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and always making sure things weren't downhill too much. You know, you don't want to be on a 45 degree. No, absolutely not. <laughs> you make these mistakes when you're young, don't you? Because your body's more robust when you're young. That's right. <laughs> well, Richard, this has been 
a wealth of enjoyment I'm for me. I'm just sat here listening, thinking, wow. <laughs> it's like, you know, you'd ne- I, we'd never met before today, had we? You'd never no. met Matt and Eco, you'd briefly met, but we've got friends in common yeah. and colleagues in common. Who like I was speaking with, um, do you remember Tim Henty? Oh, yes. Right, yes. so I've been quite good friends with Tim for right. quite a few years, and we started out, you know, he started out conducting pretty much at the same time I started playing. Right. And when I was speaking to him and talking about this trip we were taking, I said, oh, we're going to get, you know, we're really great. We've managed to speak to Richard, and he's agreed to come with us. And we were on FaceTime, and I just I just saw his face, you know, beam and smile. I was like, mm. what? He's like, you're going to have so much fun. You're going <laughs> yeah. you know, to yeah. share stories with each other. Like, you know, you'll have relatively similar understandings and experiences, yeah. like, and it'll just be great. You'll smile all the way through the interview and the chat. And, you know, it's been 45 minutes now. We have. I've not stopped smiling. It's great. It's been amazing. It's, it's been lovely. It's, it's, it's an really absolute like privilege for us. Yeah, so yeah. Thank, but before we stop, if you don't mind, we've got five very quick fire questions. <laughs> <laughs> we're asking this to everybody yeah. right okay so, and it's literally the first thing that comes into your head it doesn't have to be this you know well, long answer just go have, for it anything, yeah. it can be a little anything. bit of thought yeah okay <laughs> what is your absolute career highlight oh song of the earth without doubt oh amazing ballet yeah, yeah. definitely but the music mm-hmm. yeah just, and we were lucky enough to get Karen Cargill who's now a very big name yeah, yeah. to come and sing those performances. Wow. And uh, she was brilliant. Yeah. What would you say to your 18-year-old self if you had some advice for your 18-year-old self? I think just do what I did, to be quite honest. Wow, that's I've wonderful. In, I've just enjoyed 50-odd years of being in the theatre, Yeah, yeah. Uh, of making lots of friends, of having some really good experiences, having some really awful experiences. Yeah. <laughs> but that highlights the good experiences. Yes. yes, it does. Yes. If you weren't a conductor, what would you have been? Oh, gosh. Probably an academic, I think. Okay. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Oh, I had my Weetabix. Oh, Weetabix. Yeah. And... My one piece of toast and a black coffee. Oh, lovely. Oh. <laughs> and lastly, if you win the lottery tomorrow, what's the first thing that you're going to do? Pay off my daughter's mortgages. Oh. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, this is lovely. It is. Yeah. Well, Richard, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and just, you know, to come and share your experiences with us thank you it's been well, a thank you for pleasure. inviting me thank it's you. been lovely and Aww. i'm really pleased to have done it yeah. thank you thank you so much